Delta FH at 298 degrees Kelvin is the standard molar enthalpy of formation at standard temperature and standard pressure. How do we know what the values are? Do we have to calculate them? The values are available from data books, so no calculation is necessary. However, only compounds have a standard enthalpy of formation value. Therefore, the value is zero for elements. Standard enthalpy of formation and Hess's law are very important to us as forensic scientists. This is because we can use them to calculate the unknown enthalpy of reactions for chemical reactions which might have forensic significance, such as the destruction of a building by using an explosive, as we can see in this video. The building was blown up using black powder, which is a mixture of potassium nitrate, sulphur and carbon in the form of charcoal. We can work out the standard enthalpy of reaction, or delta RH, by taking the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of the reactants and taking that away from the sum of the standard enthalpy of formation of the products. But can you remember where we get these values from? Reference tables. And published data. Correct. But remember, only compounds have these values, not the elements. So let's take a simplified equation of black powder. We get potassium nitrate, sulphur and carbon goes to potassium sulphide, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. We can make this a thermochemical equation. This is very simple to do. Firstly, we need to balance it. Now, Hannah, you've watched Laura's video on balancing equations. Do you think you could balance this one for us? Two potassium nitrate plus sulphur plus three carbon gives potassium sulphide plus nitrogen plus three carbon dioxide. Brilliant. Now, we also need to add the state symbols. Laura, do you think you can do this for me? Solid, 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 gas, gas. Groovy. Now, to complete the thermochemical equation, we must add the standard enthalpy of reaction for the entire equation. Now, we add this at the end, but we don't know this value at the moment. So, let's calculate it using the equation that we've learned earlier. Hannah, you've got the book in front of you. Would you mind giving me the values, please? Potassium sulphide is minus 380.70. Carbon dioxide, minus 393.51. Potassium nitrate, minus 494.6. Why haven't we put any values in for sulphur carbon or nitrogen? Because they're elements that don't have standard enthalpy of formation, only compounds have them. Precisely, but are these enthalpy values correct? Yes. yes. No, you're both wrong. What? How's that then? Because you're not right, so you're wrong. But why are we wrong? Well, look at the compounds and think about the number of moles that are involved. Oh, it's three carbon dioxide and two potassium nitrates. Correct. We have to multiply the values by the number of moles present. This is because all the values are for only for one mole. OK, so what are the precise values now? Minus 380.70, minus 1180.53 and minus 989.20. Excellent. Right, we, now can work, we can now work out the equation and put the standard enthalpy of reaction at the end. Okay, now if we work it out, we get the reaction value as being minus 572.03 kilojoules per mole. We've now got everything we need to complete our thermochemical equation. Why is the number negative? Does it make a difference? Right, the negative value means that the reaction gave out heat energy. It's what we call exothermic. This sign itself, whether positive or negative, acts only as an indicator as the direction in which the energy is going. So the energy is either going from the reaction, in which case it's a negative sign and an exothermic reaction, or it goes to the reaction, which is a positive sign and is what we call endothermic. The enthalpy reaction is in kilojoules per mole, but you may be asked to express it as kilojoules per kilogram. This is because if you're a forensic scientist, you're most likely to be given bags of evidence which will need to be weighed, and it's more practical to work in uh, kilograms and mass than it is to work in moles. The conversion is very simple to do. 
Firstly, we need to calculate the relative atomic mass or molecular weight of all the elements and compounds in the products while taking into account the number of moles used. Hannah, would you like to do this for me, please? 39 plus 14 plus 16. But we multiply 16 by 3 because there are three oxygens, so that's 48, which equals 101. Then, sulphur is 32 plus carbon is 3 times 12 because there are three carbons, which is 36. So that makes 169 grams overall. Well, you're kind of right, but you're not. Think about the number of moles again. Oh yeah, there's two potassium nitrates, so it's 101 times 2, which is 202. So, the overall weight is 270 grams. Guavo. So we now know that minus 572.03 kilojoules per mole is the equivalent to that value, but per 270 grams. We also know that there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram, and we have 270 grams. So, we take the energy per mole, which is minus 572.03 kilojoules, and we multiply that by 1,000 grams divided by 270 grams. This gives us a value of minus 2,111 kilojoules per kilogram. This is the enthalpy change, or delta H, per kilogram. Is this number important? Well, yes, actually it is. You see, we now know how much energy is released per kilogram, so we can work out how much energy was released from the amount of powder we used, which was 1.5 grams. Again, this is fairly easy to do. We take the value, minus 2,111 kilojoules per kilogram, and divide that by 1,000. This is 2.1 kilojoules per gram. Right? We then multiply that by the amount of grams that we used, which was 1.5 grams. The total energy released from our explosion was therefore 3.2 kilojoules. Is that a lot of energy? Well, let me put it like this. The energy for the black powder was 2.1 kilojoules per gram. The energy in this Snickers duo is 21.4 kilojoules per gram. That means there is 10 times more energy in this chocolate bar than there was in our explosion. Are there any questions? What makes a reaction explosive? Right, well for an explosive reaction to be efficient, it must be carried out in the presence of oxygen, which features in potassium nitrate in our black powder. An explosion itself, though, is essentially an extreme release of energy creating lots of heat very quickly and forming a pressure wave which creates the loud noise and forces the wall apart. It's all about how much energy is available for combustion and how quickly it is released, which is why this Snickers bar, although has 10 times more energy, wouldn't be very efficient at blowing up a building because the energy is released quite slowly. Why do we need an ignition source? Right, well an ignition source is needed um, because it provides the activation energy required to jump over the initial energy barrier. Once this has gone over, the reaction can occur and the explosion can happen. If you want more information or about any of this stuff, then you can watch the relevant videos or contact a member of staff. Take care now.